Anyway, uh, I think uh, I'm going to start. Uh, so this is a very short talk, uh, 20 minutes, and about five of them will be about the video sequencer. And the rest will be how to accidentally start working on Blender, because the whole theme of the conference is building Blender. And some people might wonder uh, how do I start building Blender, or how do I start contributing to Blender, or what's the process, or whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, etc. So, let's go. Uh, as I said, uh, a uh, small part of it will be about video sequencer because I mean that there isn't much to talk about. If you want to know about the video sequencer, you can read the release notes of uh, every Blender version or or check out the source code or whatever, right? Um, so first of all, uh, uh, and again, uh, the whole talk will be just sort of my own personal experience, which may or might not translate to anyone else uh, outside of myself. Uh, my own story about how I started to contribute to, to Blender was, uh, again, by accident. Uh, I, I got a house model from an architect for a house I was building at the time, and and, uh, and I thought I, I'm going to export that to like OBJ format to import that into some 3D real-time viewer application and whatever, and, uh, and I was like, oh, this is slow. Okay, uh, but I'm a programmer myself, so I'm like, uh, I'm gonna look at why, why is it slow? So I put it up some profiler and I saw that, uh, 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 okay, it's slow. And then I noticed, oh, there's a new Blender version in beta or in alpha, I don't remember now, and the uh, OBJ exporter is uh, 10 times faster there, which is great. Uh, and then I started to profile that and then I thought, oh, this is still too slow. So uh, should it be 10 times more fast than, than the 10 times faster that it was at the time? Turns out, yes, it's possible to do that. Uh, and then I stole the finishing and landing of, of, of that uh, the Google Summer of Code project from Howard. And, and that's how Blender 4, 3 points whatever got a new OBJ importer and exporter. And uh, that was the easy part. The hard part was fixing the remaining 50 bugs and whatever, because OBJ, as all the old for file formats go, doesn't really have a specification. So it's kind of, you know, it says uh, numbers should be separated by spaces. Okay, can they be separated by tabs? Turns out, yes, some software does that. Uh, can it be separated by something that's not a tab or a space, but is a Unicode white space? Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, and that's how I started to contribute to Blender uh, two or three years ago, uh, something like that. Uh, and then, uh, about one year before today, I was in Amsterdam for completely unrelated reasons, and uh, then I went to a Blender uh, office because I've never been there. And then uh, Francesco and Sergei locked me up in a room and said, you're going to work on, on the video sequencer. And I was like, what's a video sequencer? <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I wasn't aware that the Blender has a video sequencer, even though it, it is an option in the very startup you know, window. <laughs> Uh, video editing, I, I never clicked that. Uh, I guess most people don't. Uh, uh, the good thing is, I know uh, at that point, I knew nothing about video or about sequences or about video editing. I think I, I had used iMovie three times in my life. <laughs> and I've heard the name Final Cut Pro and Premiere and uh, I might have used DaVinci once. Uh, and like, that's it. Uh, which means I would be a perfect person to work on the video sequence, of course, right? Uh, somehow, uh, both Francesco and Sergei were not sort of didn't think that's a problem. And that's how I started to work on the video sequence. Uh, yesterday, I was talking with someone uh, and uh, th they thought I would explain why I'm working on the video sequence in this uh, talk. I don't know why. Like, I, I, I know how that happened, <laughs> but why that happened, I, I have no idea. 
why can, why continue working on the video sequencer? I, that's a good question. I, 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 I haven't thought about that either. Um, uh, anyway, so basically in this past year, um, it happened to do some things, some impro improvements for, for the sequencer in 4.1 and 4.2 and 4.3 and soon 4.4. Uh, the, we, we had a, a sequencer workshop uh, uh, several months ago, and uh, there's a blog post about that with all the notes and, and whatever on the, on the code blog, uh, with some of the things that were done and some of the things that might be done soon, or at least the team wants to be, wants to happen. It's just, uh, it's not ex exactly clear who would make that happen. Uh, anyway, so that's about the sequencer. There will be nothing related to sequencer for the rest of the talk. Um, as I said, five minutes. Uh, anyway, so uh, if I know nothing about the sequencer and I didn't even know that the sequence exists, uh, so of course I'm not familiar with that code base. And uh, that code base within Blender turns out as many parts within Blender is fairly old. So uh, how do you get into a code base that already exists for a product that already exists uh, and uh, sort of try to do improvements or try to do new features or try to do optimizations and whatever. And that's fairly universal, not related to the VSC and not even related to Blender. That, that, that just sort of the process, how to do that is fairly similar across any code bases. So many code bases for many actual products that are used in the wild are not new. They are fairly old. Like e even if you look at something that you would think is fairly new, like I don't know, Chrome or whatever, you know, is, Chrome is probably 20 years old at this point, 15 maybe. Uh, Blender is, you know, just had like a 30 year anniversary uh, of Blender itself. Some of the code base is actually older than that because uh, um, I was talking with John about how I changed something about image scaling code and whatever that I found and he said, oh, it's literally from, from the Amiga days, uh, which means it's, I don't know, 89 or whatever, right? Uh, so some of the things since the Amiga days have changed in computers. Uh, so, for example, there's much less pressure to store integers in two bytes uh, these days uh, uh, or much less pressure to avoid multiplying two numbers together or whatever, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, Blender is no exception to sort of general rule that code base is old, code base is fairly, well, Blender is sort of not the huge code base, but, but it's not small either. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have no documentation whatsoever, no code comments, uh, and if you try to figure out why things are done a certain way, no one remembers why. Uh, or like, ah, I don't know, it, it sounded like a good idea at the time or whatever. Uh, uh, and uh, sequencer is, uh, uh, large parts of sequencer were not actively sort of being worked on for, for a long time. So if you would do like a git, git blame, you would see, you know, oh, oh who wrote this? Oh, it turns out Tom did 15 years ago. Uh, and uh, 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 as I guess, as, as used to be, maybe Blender today is much better at documenting the, the, the changes and the, and the reasoning behind changes. But back then it was like add sequencer. Okay, 15,000 lines of code. Uh, well, okay, I guess that's the sequencer. Uh, uh, and many, many cases when you work on, a, on, a, on an existing uh, code base, especially one that's old, uh, you would look at something and say, what is this shit, uh, sort of? Uh, this is nonsense. This doesn't make any sense. This should be just thrown away and then re rewritten completely. And that's... Uh, that is true, but that is also dangerous because any significant rewrite throws away decades of knowledge and decades of possible bug fixes and corner case handling and uh, workarounds for whatever broken video codecs or whatever it, it, it is that 
uh, is in that project. Uh, whenever you look at anything that sort of looks out of place or just wrong or whatever, and it's, it's usually sort of, you can categorize that into uh, uh, sort of, okay, it looks wrong, but there's a good reason for that. You just don't know the reason yet. And it's good if that's the reason why something is explained in a code comment or whatever, right? Uh, sometimes it isn't, but there is a good reason. Sometimes there was a good reason for that, but it's not anymore. Like if the code was written on, on, on uh, Amiga um, 35 years ago, but you know, it made sense back then. It doesn't make sense anymore. It should be rewritten. Sometimes the code is just stupid. Everyone agrees it's stupid, whatever they, they apologize for their stupidity or like you have no idea why they wrote it that way, it should be fixed. And sometimes you should just run from that code and sort of everyone who tried to understand it went insane and uh, it's it literally impossible to improve it for whatever, it's just horrible. Uh, uh, so some of the tools that uh, helped me to get into Blender code base and into sequencer code base in general, uh, it really helps if there is good test coverage and Blender is, well, uh, some parts of Blender have good test coverage, some parts not so much, some parts have literally zero test coverage. Uh, so whenever you modify something, it sort of, um, it might break something, it might not, sort of, you don't know. Uh, great test coverage is great. Of course, tests are not, you know, uh, tests are not free. Tests need to be written, they need to be maintained, they need to be updated, they need to be run on the, on the build farm, which takes up time. So it's, it's not exactly that everything should be tested to a maximum extent. But good test coverage saves, saves a lot of uh, development time in the future, especially if you're trying to change an existing system or try to optimize it while preserving behavior. Uh, having a good debugger also helps, uh, which is kind of obvious, but I'm, I'm constantly amazed about how many people don't know how to use a debugger. Uh, which is mind blowing to me. Uh, anyway, just learn to use a debugger. It's a good thing. Uh, source control, uh, like in Git case, that's called Git blame. Uh, some other version control systems call that like annotate or, or history or... Uh, uh, this is great. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in some cases it reveals that, oh, you know, this was literally written 20 years ago and uh, with no explanations why, but Blender is getting better at it. Uh, so if you're looking at a piece of code and wondering, oh, why is this? And sort of, then you can at least figure out who wrote this and go and ask them and uh, if they still remember. Uh, uh, in some cases, it, it is that you're looking at a piece of code and saying, which idiot wrote this? And then you do git blame and turns out it's you two years ago. And, uh, uh, and like, oh, what was I thinking? Uh, 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 learning to use a profiler uh, for figuring out performance uh, problems and performance bottlenecks is also great. Uh, again, it's surprising to me how many people don't know how to use a profiler or don't use a profiler, even if they're working on performance improvements. And, uh, and the general rule about performance is that unless you have, I don't know, millions of years of performance optimization experience, uh, you sh generally shouldn't assume anything. Like if you look at a piece of code or a feature or, or a subsystem, whatever, you think this is the slow part. Many times this isn't the slow part. The slow part is some stupidity somewhere entirely else. Uh, and a, so a profiler is a really useful tool to just point out which parts are exactly slow. Uh, why they're slow is a whole, whole different sort of uh, topic uh, and a whole different question. Sometimes it is obvious why they're slow, sometimes it isn't. So uh, you can go really deep into like micro, micro architectural reasons for, you know, profiling and whatever. But, but many, many, many optimizations within Blender and in any other pro project 
uh, where there's a performance issue in many, many cases, it's just some stupidity somewhere. Uh, so once you fix those, like, uh, then you get into sort of more involved performance optimizations, which might involve archit architecture changes or algorithm changes or whatever. But, but again, in, in my experience, majority of performance that is just lying there on the floor is just some, some accidentally stupid stuff that happened. Uh, many great profiling tools exist. Uh, uh, I, uh, I think majority of Blender development team is actually using Linux. I, I'm not, uh, so I have no idea about Linux. I, I, I hope some profilers exist there. Uh, uh, on Windows, I'm using Superluminal, but there are many others. On, on, on Mac, there's Xcode Instruments Profiler, and both of those are, are great. Uh, use them. Uh, fun fact, Superluminal is made in Amsterdam, just like Blender is. Uh, yay. Uh, 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 so yeah, uh, uh, getting into a new area, whether that would be a sequencer or whether that would be Blend in general or anything. So for example, in, in my case, when, when I, as I mentioned, I didn't even know that what's a sequencer or that it exists. So you, you get into this and you, you need to learn a bunch of concepts, like what's a strip? Confusingly, within Blender code base, it's, it's a strip or a sequence or I think something else. It's like called three different names for the same thing, uh, which is confusing, but that's kind of, uh, some of those are hard to change for backwards compatibility reasons and whatever. Um, uh, then you would get into like, oh, how is FFmpeg used within Blender? And FFmpeg by itself is a very, very messy sort of uh, uh, project in terms of what options it exposes and whatever. The, there's a joke saying that the, the, the primary use case for AI is figuring out our, uh, arguments for, for, for FFmpeg to, to get it to do what, uh, what you need to do. Uh, which isn't that far from truth. Uh, and within Blender, majority of FFmpeg knowledge in the world is how to use the common light tool. Blender uses the API of, of FFmpeg, which is a whole another layer of like complexity and whatever. So it's a mess. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yeah, within sequencer, you also need to learn like what's a proxy, what's a cache. There's like five different types of caches and some of them might not even be all that useful or whatever. Um, or like uh, all, all of these things, but as with anything, you just sort of start to read the code, start to experiment with various things, to uh, read the documentation if it exists and whatever, right? Or update documentation if it turns out to be lying to you and, and, and so on. Uh, uh, again, this is example about the sequencer, but that is sort of universal in how to do that across anything. Uh, there are some, some downsides of being someone who doesn't know anything about video editing or, or about the, the area that you're getting into is that you simply don't know a lot of things, right? Which is both a positive aspect because you start to question everything uh, where someone with experience might just assume that that's how it should be. But the downside is that, yeah, like uh, say working on performance improvements is kind of obvious. You just look at some, something and make it faster, right? That's easy. But for example, knowing whether the workflow is even good or whether that makes sense, you need to have an experience to understand that, right? And, and that's the reason why for this past year I've been avoiding anything that's user interface related to within the sequencer because I simply don't know, right? So working on performance is the easiest possible work that you could do, sort of. Just make it faster, right? Uh, uh, and usually people don't object to things being faster. Whereas if you want to move a button to a different place, you know, you get like, no, I want this to be here. And someone else says, no, it should be there and whatever. And you get five different conflicting opinions and uh, no one knows how to decide the, 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 the actual solution. Um, so the, the, 
the way to get out of that is that you somehow need to talk about to people who are experts in that area about what are their workflows, what are their annoyances, and what what is uh, what is good, what is bad about the the current user interface and current workflow, and and so on. Kind of obvious. Uh, when it comes to shipping some of the things that you work on. Uh, I think uh, Blender's process is fairly decent in terms of it's not completely chaos, but it's not actively annoying you. Uh, like uh, some of the code bases on some of the companies I worked before, it felt like the process tries to prevent everyone from doing anything productive whatsoever. Like if you want to change a typer, you need to file five Jira tickets for that and get a meeting with seven people and get an approval from a vice president or whatever, right? Uh, I'm slightly exaggerating, but, but some of the processes that uh, some other pro projects and some companies have are way worse than what, whatever Blender has now. Uh, Blender has like, yeah, maybe code should be reviewed. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, m maybe you should run tests. Okay, fine. Uh, maybe it should be built and, and whatever, right? Uh, what I found as a cheat code where I, 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 I was asking some people why, why they approve my PRs so quickly it turns out they said that because the the PR description gives me everything that I that I need to know, like what I'm changing, why I'm changing, if it has anything that sort of user visible screenshots of before and after, if it's performance related measurements of uh, before and after on what hardware, whatever, right? And uh, surprisingly to me, uh, both within Blender and outside Blender, many people for some reason, don't know or don't care about making good and actionable PRs. They would be like, uh, change something or whatever, you know. Uh, uh, and as a code reviewer, you're like, okay, what are you changing? Why? You know, is it even better than it was before? Because you don't know. You, you all, all you have is the diff of the source files that are changed. So, uh, a cheat code to make your change ship within Blend and get reviewed easier would be to make to make the reviewers' life easier because then they, I see Sibren saying, yes, if you want to make Sibren happy, uh, I don't know, bring him cookies or make PRs that are good. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, as as I mentioned earlier, some of the things are hard to ship and hard to agree on just because they are hard to agree on. Uh, and some of the things are complex because they are complex. But if, 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 if you can make things as simple as possible, then yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, one thing I liked uh, from the, this year's Google Summer of Code student who worked on, on, on the sequencer was he wrote like a whole blog post about how they did like previous snapping and 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 linked strips and 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 whatever, and his takeaway was that it's not as scary as he thought it would be. Uh, so yeah, that's that's I think is 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 my my takeaway is that. Uh, you you could imagine that Blender is like oh you know only whatever only super uh, superhuman people can contribute to, to that and turns out no it's fairly easy to contribute to Blender uh, as long as you don't make it harder uh, uh, on your side just describe what you're doing describe the advantages describe uh, whatever and then. And then it would ship to whatever is the whatever millions of people using Blender uh, fairly easily, and and that's it. Uh, 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 I'm not sure if there are any questions, so, and I think we are probably out of time for questions anyway, but if you have any questions for me, then just ask me, I'll be around, or otherwise, 
on the Blender chat or whatever, right? Uh, so yeah, go get some food now. <laughs>